Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the last day and last game of Lindores Abbey Rapid Challenge 2020. This is Grand Final Day 3. Uh, in the first day, Daniel Dubov managed to win first mini match uh, and he took a lead and then Hikaru Nakamura uh, won the second mini match. So we had a score one to one um, and this was the last match, but still it was very, very exciting because again, Daniel Dubov took a lead. Hikaru Nakamura uh, won another game uh, then we had a draw and now everything is gonna be decided by Armageddon game for those who don't know Armageddon game is the blitz game without the time incrementation white gonna have five minutes and have to win to win the tournament and black gonna have four minutes and the draw is enough to win the tournament uh, and as there is the no time incrementation, it's very easy to get flagged if you, you know, don't do good um, time management. And it's happened to Ding Liren. Ding Liren lost to Yu Yang Yi in the first mini match in the quarterfinals. Uh, and that was pretty surprising, especially Ding Liren uh, had a much better winning position. So uh, very, very exciting stuff here. And um, Daniel Dubov, his blitz ranking 2720. And that means in terms of ranking, he is number 32 in the world. He is a very creative Russian player, second of Magnus Carlsen, uh, and he's 24 years old, uh, grandmaster from Russia, and he's gonna play as white. And his opponent, Hikaru Nakamura, has the ranking, legendary ranking 2900 in Blitz. Uh, that means he's in terms of ranking number one in the world. However, Magnus Carlsen won last year, you know, um, world championship. So he's the, the world champion in Blitz. Uh, Hikaru Nakamura is 32 years old. Uh, and he's gonna play as black as he won the first stage of the tournament round robin when everybody played with everybody uh, and yeah and now he had the choice very simple strategy get to the armageddon pick black draw the game and win and pass to another uh, round okay so without further ado let's see what happened on the board and let's see uh, what Daniel Dubov choose to play as white to have a chances to win against Hikaru Nakamura. Daniel Dubov plays e4. We have e5. And now Vienna game. Knight on c3. Uh, not often uh, seen on the on the boards, but uh, it's a very, very tricky opening with a lot of sharp lines. And I already show you one of the games where Alireza Firuzia and Levon Aronian played in the most famous Frankenstein Dracula variation, very bloody one. And even they choose the, the more calm lines. It, it was still very, very exciting to see it. If you haven't seen it, check over there. Uh, I, I show you the bubble. Just click the link and watch after this final. Uh, we have Knight on C6. So Hikaru Nakamura goes also for more calm lines. Uh, as he just needs a draw. We have g3 and bishop on c5. So just normal, regular development by Hikaru Nakamura. No fancy move so far. Bishop on g2, knight on f6, knight g on e2, preparing f4 in the future, uh, and then d6. So as you see, very harmonious. It's like, you know, for the beginners, move your pawn, bring your knights, you know, bring your bishop, move d6, prepare another bishop to, to develop all the, you know, opening principles uh, by Hikaru Nakamura. Nothing fancy here. We have d3 uh, and here very important move by Hikaru Nakamura a6. Otherwise, knight on a4 would just pick the best bishop, uh, you know, the best minor piece. Uh, on the board, okay? This this bishop is just a beast on this diagonal. Uh, it's, for example, prevents f4, early f4. So we have a6, as this bishop gonna retreat to a7 if needed. We have castle, and now black has to play something with the bishop. Where to develop the bishop? The main line uh, is bishop on e6. This, this is what was played. Uh, and now knight on d5 can be played, which is the main line here. And of course, the knight cannot take it because this pawn, you know, would fork the knight and the, and the bishop. So it's not possible. However, uh, Daniel Dubov goes for h3 with the plan king on h2 and then f4. 
as this pawn is uh, pinned, as I said. So uh, we have h6 now. Uh, any bishops on g5 and, you know, knight on d5 uh, are not possible now. We have king on h2 as planned. Now we have d5. Uh, now about this position. It's it's pretty uh, important position because white already stands slightly better. And if you check in the database, most of the games are won by white very very active and it doesn't look like but white have very very nice gameplay here and usually after for example queen uh, on e7 after g5 after h5 white just wins the only line where where black you know managed to win uh, is actually d5 the most active move this is what hikaru nakamura played e takes on d5 knight takes on d5 and now f4 as planned uh, we have e takes on f4 uh, and now the only move in the database now is, of course, knight on f4. Very natural move, and this, of course, should be played. Uh, knight on f4, and after knight on f4, bishop on f4, queen on d7, uh, the game continue, and white stands slightly better. However, as I said, uh, black won that game. So, uh, this is, you know, very, very natural way of playing that. However, after e takes on f4, very shocking move by, by white, but recommended by the engine. So, uh, maybe that was the home preparation, bishop on d5, by Daniel Dubov. And what to play as black now uh intermezzo in, in between move of course is the is the correct answer uh f takes on g3 uh, and this was what daniel dubov actually said that he was considering and he had the feeling that he's not gonna you know uh get anything you know good from that position uh, but after knight on g3 bishop on d5 because have to take the piece back uh all the moves are forced so queen on h5 with the check with the double attack on the on the bishop okay so uh, knight on e7 defending but now knight on d5 the rook and the queen watching an f7 now so queen on d5 uh, and after queen on d5 knight on d5 rook d5 and winning the material okay and there is nothing black can do about that maybe castle but then c4 knight before uh and and yeah this is simply uh, minor piece for two pawns so definitely white stands better here however Daniel Dubov felt that something maybe is wrong with that position but as you see if he wanted to play you know piece up then why not it's it's much easier of course to play you know to be you know up the piece than, than being you know down the piece so so why not uh, however Hikaru Nakamura didn't go for this move and he played immediately bishop on d5 bishop on d5 and this actually blunders the game because now knight on f4 attacking the bishop twice and you cannot move the bishop to e6 because now knight on e6 f takes on e6 and queen with check winning the bishop okay so this is that this is the thing so after knight on f4 uh, knight on e7 by hikaru nakamura but still queen on h5 however in studio uh, peter Fiedler just asked because it it bothers him so much why you just didn't play you know knight f on d5 and then after knight on d5, queen h5 now. And now you attack the f7 and you also attack uh, both of the pieces, okay? So nothing can be done here. You cannot move the knight because you're gonna lose the bishop. So uh, black would have to castle and you simply uh, win the piece and the game, of course. So Dubov said, oh yeah, that was, that was easier. But I was so excited that queen on h5 and now, you know, look at this position. I attack f7. Uh, I have all of this. I have the knights attacking this bishop. It's, it's all, you know, uh, winning position. Uh, we have c6 by Hikaru Nakamura. Knight c on d5. Now c takes on d5. And now knight on e6 attacking the bishop, attacking the queen and attacking g7. Okay. And of course the pawn is pinned because of the queen on h5. Uh, g6 doesn't really work because queen e5 and then... Uh, the rook is under attack uh, and also the queen is under attack. So f takes on e6 and now just exchange. Oh, and now just exchange the queens. Uh, and after rook on d8, even bishop takes one more pawn. So uh, white are up the exchange and up the pawn. So very easy, you know, uh, game so far. However, we have queen on d6 and here Daniel Dubov said, okay, Hikaru maybe should should resign. Uh, and that would be cool. I would just, you know, don't need to continue the game. However, I realized that uh, that is the blitz. 
and I have, you know, a couple of minutes to win the game and I have to be very precise. I cannot blunder anything. So knight on g7 with check, king on d7, rook on f7 and now rook a on f8. Uh, and here Daniel Dubov play bishop on f4 attacking the queen and now black doesn't have a choice cannot move the queen if the queen is moved for example uh to b6 then queen f5 with check okay the knight is pinned so cannot take uh queen on c6 queen on f6 now king on d7 and then simply win the rook and the game so being rook up of course it's much easier to to win okay uh whole rook up so this this would be disaster this is why rook on f7 is forced uh, and now bishop on d6 uh, rook on f2 with check now king on h1 and only now bishop on d6 so what's the situation on the board we have a uh, rook on the both sides we have the knights and we have four pawns that's not the pawn so we have four pawns and now rook and the bishop for the queen and two pawns so definitely whites are up the material but still have to be very very precise we have rook on e1 rook h on f8 connecting the rooks now if these rooks go somewhere uh, then this rook still can be dangerous and you know even deliver a checkmate here so uh, queen on g4 with check king on c6 knight on e6 bringing the knight to the game and now uh, knight and the queen can be very well coordinated and very dangerous against the king uh, we have rook from the 8th rank to f6 we have knight on d4 with check king on b6 and now rook on e2 trying to uh, exchange the rooks rook on f1 of course hikaru nakamura is not interested king on g2 and now knight on c6 so uh, black doesn't have any choice you know to play with this knight so just try to exchange which uh, of course uh, Daniel Dubov is happy to do that so knight on c6 uh, b takes on c6 and now c3 preparing b4 b4 could be played without this preparation but Daniel Dubov want to be you know ultra solid and don't miss anything and just you know prepare with c3 uh, rook from the first rank to f5 now and now b4 as planned king on b7 and now uh, queen on g7 asking black what you gonna do now uh, we have rook on f7 and white just pick up the pawn and improve you know the material advantage we have bishop on c7 and now queen on e3 uh, bishop on b6 and now d4 so blocking the the, the bishop now bishop cannot move uh, usually we try to put you know uh, the pawns on the light squares uh, against the the black square bishop however in this case this works as a wall and uh, really the the dark square bishop has uh, uh, very limited you know movement uh, we have bishop on c7 now uh, h4 uh, and now a5 a3 solidifying and now just for your information uh, if you think that you know black can can for example attack on g3 actually this move h4 was invitation to do that because after rook on f2 yes black can win the queen back however uh, being up the pawn is of course very easy win for white this is past pawn so rook gonna be very busy uh, and the king can you know just go here and then four pawns against three pawns uh, pretty easy uh, win for white also uh, the king can also go just straight here and help to support this uh, this pawn and black has no counter play on the queen side so definitely uh, it cannot be played we have a4 uh, just create another weakness but it doesn't really matter we have queen on d3 now preparing b5 so uh, daniel dubov wants to finish the game uh, we have rook on f1 maybe trying to you know play something on the on the first rack but unlikely as the uh, rooks would be disconnected b5 uh, now rook from the first rank to f6 uh, b takes on c6 king takes on c6 and now queen on a6 with check bishop on b6 uh, queen on a4 just winning even more material uh, king on b7 now queen on e8 we have rook on f8 and now uh, rook on e7 first with check bishop on c7 and only now queen on b5 uh, rook on b6 and here rook on c7 and in this position hikaru nakamura resigned the game however he lost this game you know in move number 12 
Uh, this is move number 45, so he still tried to push, you know, wait for blunder of, of Daniel Dubov, but Daniel played very precisely, uh, didn't play anything risky, just improve his position, win another pawn, another pawn, and this is completely winning, uh, because after king on c7, queen on c5 winning the rook is coming okay so so this is why here hikaru nakamura resigned the game so congratulations big congratulations to daniel dubov here are the scores all the scores uh, and the way of both of players uh, to the final hikaru nakamura in semi-finals won with magnus carlsen in armageddon game and Daniel Dubov, uh, the best match, the best match and the best game and the best move of all games was in his quarterfinal games against Sergei Karyakin because all the games were decisive and they play quite exciting chess. That was like real, real chess. Uh, and also Daniel Dubov managed to win uh, against Ding Liren. So uh, in the finals, as you see, he won against Hikaru Nakamura. He won 45,000, a first prize, and he also qualified to the, to the main tournament of uh, Magnus Carlsen Tour. Uh, and number two runner-up, Hikaru Nakamura, second prize, $27,000. Also, congratulations for beating Magnus Carlsen, a uh, really awesome tournament. And if you want to see other games from the tournament, uh, I have the playlist with 21 games. Yes, I, I managed to somehow, you know, uh, comment on 21 games. So, so link is over there. You can check it. Uh, and of course, as always, if you like this video, press like. If you didn't like, for some reason, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss any other quality content, just press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.